Welcome back to Lunchtime Agenda. Joining me on our panel of politicians today, we have the Senator John Williams and the Labor MP, Kelvin Thompson. I want to get your take on the startling events we've seen in Queensland this morning. Do you have to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't a good one. Uh, well, it could be, actually, in the end. Let's just explain what has happened this morning. The Queensland opposition leader, John Paul Langbrook, has uh, stepped down from his position. It followed an announcement by the Brisbane Lord Mayor, Campbell Newman, that he'll put his hand up to be the opposition leader in Queensland, even though he hasn't, he isn't in the Queensland Parliament. Here's what Campbell Newman had to say this morning. I'm putting on the table today a very significant personal decision, but I do that in the interests of people across Queensland. I'm prepared to sacrifice uh, what I've been doing in, in Brisbane City to actually look after the people of Queensland. I'm so passionate about Queensland, I want to get Queensland back on track, and that's why I'm uh, making this statement but today. The the and this was John Paul Langbrook's reaction. I've had the incredible privilege of being the leader of the opposition for nigh on two years, and I've been able to travel from the Torres Strait to Coolangatta and areas west as well, being the greatest privilege of all to meet fellow Queenslanders and their concerns for their families and their future and our state, which I know that they think and that I believe is the greatest state in the Federation. And we deserve to have an alternative to this Labor government. And so that's why today I'm standing aside uh, as Leader of the Opposition. Senator, it's a bizarre position, but obviously the LNP thinks that Campbell Newman, not even in Parliament yet, would have uh, a better chance up against Anna Blight the next election, even though he's yet to be uh, pre-selected even or uh, into the Parliament. Yeah, you don't want to move on to the New South Wales election, do you, actually? <laughs> Later. Look, I know uh, Lawrence Springborg. I've never met John Paul Lambrook. I don't know the Lord Mayor. I don't know what's going on. I'm very glad I'm a member of the New South Wales National Party where we have a great coalition. But seriously, uh, they've got to get their act together, uh, get some stability there, because Queensland is in a mess, about $80 billion worth of debt, and they need to show they're an alternative government to get Queensland back on track. And uh, they're not going to do it by doing it this way. So let's hope that in the next uh, period of time, sooner than later, then the stability returns there in the LNP and uh, they get on with the job. So you're suggesting that the LNP is a bit of a mess at the moment and this, what's happened this morning is a sign of that? I don't know. I've never been to an LNP meeting or conference or anything, but when you see uh, the opposition leader stand down and uh, someone flagged who is not even a member of parliament well obviously there's a there's a bit of bloodletting and uh, to me and I'll be, I'll be frank and honest uh, that is not stable and stability is what is needed in any team and the sooner they return to that the better and uh, as I said I, I don't know any of them except Lawrence Springborg I've met a couple of times and they'll just have to sort it out up there I know that as far as the Queensland senators go the LNP would get on very well and have a great relationship down here with Ian MacDonald, Barnaby Joyce, the whole crew but uh, at a state level obviously they're going to have to bring some stability back there and uh, sort this mess out. Cameron, obviously the LNP thinks that Campbell Newman's the best guy for the job, even though he's not in the parliament. Do you think that he could actually inject some uh, energy into the party? We know that Campbell Newman is an extremely popular law mayor. His approval ratings are really up there. Do you think Anna Bly might be more worried now about the election? I think the Queensland Liberal National Party is in a meltdown of nuclear proportions and uh, it's remarkable to me to see the prospect of a, a leader who is not actually in the parliament. I know the parliaments uh, don't enjoy quite the same respect as they used to or I would like to see them have but uh, when you reach the stage that a, a major political party thinks it's okay to have a, a leader who's not even a member of the parliament, you know, I, I know if the Labor Party did that there'd be all this talk about faceless men and so on, we'd never hear the end of it. Well, Cameron Newman's standing for a Labor seat. Um, do you think that that means that, you know, there's at least one seat that he Labor will probably lose at the next election because he will be such a high profile candidate? Well, I, th that's certainly not a foregone conclusion. If the seat's a, a, a Labor seat now, it may well be a Labor seat come the next election. So the, the Liberal National Party is doing an odd thing in Queensland if it seriously proposes to install as leader someone who is not in the parliament and who may never be in the parliament. Have you ever Actually, heard of... Actually, maybe another case of Bob Hawke, 82-83, with Bill Hayden. Uh, bring in uh, Campbell Newman and you've got a great leader and uh, things go well for you. So, as I said, stability needs to return soon, but I wouldn't be getting too cocky if I was Anna Bly because they've got a pretty poor history of running that state and uh, once LNP get the house in order, and I know they will, 
then they'll be a, a force to tackle with come the next state election. Mm. Have you heard of this ever happening before? Is it... No, there's a little bit shades of the Joe for Canberra campaign, but Joe never became a member of the federal parliament. And uh, in relation to uh, to Bob Hawke, he certainly did not become leader of the parliamentary Labor Party until after he had become mm. the member for Wills, his distinguished, distinguished predecessor of mine, until <laughs> a, after he had entered the parliament as member for Wills. Mm. Yeah, it's really strange. It would be great to watch and went on to win the '83 election. He did. Stayed there for a long time. Probably he, makes he the next Queensland he, he election did. a lot more interesting for all of us uh, watching mm. from Canberra. Let's check in on how the New South Wales. Election election is going. Of course, the campaign is in its final stages. Voters going to the polls on Saturday. New South Wales election reporter Vanessa Trezaz is with us now. Vanessa, last night we saw a former Labor power broker predicting that Labor will be in opposition for at least three terms. That's pretty much uh, kicking the party while it's down, isn't it? Yeah, just a little, Ashley. It never won to hold back. Graham Richardson certainly didn't at the it Italian Chamber of Commerce and Industry Forum in Sydney last night. Uh, it's worth noting he was one of the first political figures to declare that Labor could not win this election, and that was early last year. Last night he had this to say. This is so bad, worse since 1904, that I can't imagine they get back even in two terms. Now, that, you know, obviously if there was a a run of scandals like Labor's just had in the second term or something, then it's possible it could be a two-term government, but you'd have to say three terms. So uh, a long, long slog. The power broker went on to say he did not think that Christina Keneally would be pursuing a career in federal politics, as some are speculating. A former union boss, John Robertson, is the rumoured replacement for Ms Keneally. But that's complicated by the fact that there's no guarantee that he will win the normally ultra-safe uh, outer western Sydney seat of uh, Blacktown. So when you think about it, Ashley, whatever seats Labor does retain in this election will in many cases be filled with those so-called uh, fresh blood candidates, which in the long term could be beneficial for the party, but in the short term uh, it is an inexperienced uh, line-up. We should add also uh, weighing into the political debate at this forum last night was former Liberal New South Wales Premier Nick Greiner, who said that the state has been ready for a change in government for some time now. Let's take a listen. Uh, I think the reality is uh, this government uh, expected to lose four years ago, should have lost four years ago and mostly didn't because the Libs were no good. Uh, no, it wasn't uh, any wonder, wonder on Maurice Yemmer's part, it was essentially uh, that the Liberal and National parties four years ago uh, enabled Labor to win effectively one more election than they should have. Griner also said that uh, Barry O'Farrell's uh, softly, softly, small target campaigning is the right approach for this election, Ashley. Vanessa Trezaya, thanks for the update. We do expect, of course, Barry Farrell will be the Premier uh, over the weekend. Kelvin, are there any federal issues playing into this, or is this all about state Labor being there too long and having a pretty controversial uh, reign there? Uh, I'm not from New South Wales and, and haven't been involved in the campaigning, but my sense of it is that it's about the state issues and people making a, a judgment about those. Uh, let me observe that there's a lot of... Uh, conversation to the effect that this is a foregone, foregone conclusion and in those circumstances it's, uh, it's a risk that the voters won't really get much out of the political parties by way of uh, undertakings about what they will do in government. I think that uh, um, for most of the political cycle uh, business keeps telling political parties and governments what they want them to do. Elections are a chance for the voters to tell political parties and governments what they want them to do and I think that people in New South Wales should be saying to themselves Oh, I'm not going to vote for the opposition. I'm not going to vote for Barry Farrell until I hear more about what he intends to do on workplace relations, on, on planning, on the cost of living issues like electricity prices, public transport, community services. I think people need to use the election to give political parties of all sides proper scrutiny. Well, John, that is a criticism we've seen directed at Barry Farrell. He's been too vague. He's running a small target campaign. Well, just uh, first what Kelvin said, I agree with him. Uh, he need not feel embarrassed about not being involved in New South Wales state election because virtually every federal Labor politician in New South Wales have distanced themselves as well. They're like a, like a Kelpie dog that's done the right, wrong thing and are hiding up kennels as well. And uh, look, the Barry O'Farrell has the clear detail planning, hospitals, 
with with um, Andrew Stoner, they have a great coalition. And as far as the Labor government goes, New South Wales, actually, if we were to produce a horror movie in politics, it would be the movie where not only the kids but the adults would be putting their hands over their, their eyes watching it because from the Morris Yammer to the Nathan Rees to the Christine Keneally to everyone bailing out to the $778 million a year wasted identified by the Auditor-General, to people being sacked, to people in front of ICAC, to people in jail. It just gets a horror movie as you look through it. And that's what's going to happen. And people in New South Wales have had 16 years of this. Uh, I think they'll take with a guillotine this week to the Labor government in New South Wales and uh, we'll see the end result. We will have, of course, full coverage of uh, the election on Sky News on Saturday night. Kelvin Thompson and John Williams, thank you both for your insights today. We do Thanks, appreciate yeah. it as always. Good to talk with you. We are about to take you live to question time now in the House of Representatives.